Hi there, I'm Martin. I'm a career consultant at Queen Mary University here to speak about career pivots or a change in your career direction. You may feel that you've overcome so many obstacles to get to where you are now in your university career. And with a downturn in the economy hitting, this can make things more difficult. Some job offers have been rescinded. There are less jobs at this time than there were last year. And this means that things are going to be tougher in order to find the job that you want after university. But don't despair. Companies may not be hiring now, but they will be hiring. There are still jobs out there as well. And we want to position you as well as possible to get those jobs. Not just any job, a really good job for you. Experience tells me and my colleagues, although it is difficult to find career direction, it is possible now. And career pivots are a useful thing to bear in mind at times like this. Though it can be tempting just to settle for any job offer right now, it's worth putting in the time in order to ensure that you've got a really clear career direction and you've taken into account the economy as it stands right now. So ask yourself this question. What is your best next career move to move you towards your dream job, even if it's not feasible to get it right now? There are many ways in which people choose careers which just isn't really serving them. The first is by accident and they just chance into a job just because it comes up. The second is by apathy and that just by being forced to make money, they take a job and most of the time, it's not going to be a good fit unless you get very lucky. And the third is social pressure, where the number one and two careers advice centres are usually family and friends, and they may not be best placed to give you the right advice. I want to share a case study now of Priscilla, a graduate from university at Queen Mary in 2008 at the time of a financial crisis. Now, she couldn't get a graduate job, so she went into... Uh, retail, working on the high street for seven months. Then she transitioned into the head office there. And after getting experience there, she then transitioned again into financial services, um, working in risk management. This was a great result. This is what she wanted. And you'll have noticed there she, that she made career pivots on her journey in order to get there. And that might be something that you can consider as part of a plan A, plan B and plan Z. Now, I really like this method because it allows you to navigate the uncertainties and complexities of the future. Let me take you through that. So plan A is your top option and that is something that you're, you're pretty sure that you're gonna like it and be good at it. You're pretty sure that it's viable and that you can land a job in it right now in the economy and you're pretty sure it's feasible. That's the third point, and that you have enough time, money and hassle in order to get that job, to put in the effort to get it. If that's not the case, then book an appointment with a career consultant like me and we can take you through that journey. And then moving on to plan B, this is usually a nearby alternative, something that's not exactly what you want, but it's pretty close to it in terms of the role and the industry. Plan Z is then your fallback plan. So that's the option that you're going to take if you can't get your plan A and plan B. And it's gonna be easy to achieve. That can give you that sense of confidence. Um, it can allow you to take more risks in your plan A and plan B, and just feel less anxious. What really helps to put together your plan A, plan B, plan Z, is your career co fulfillment criteria. And what I mean by that is a written condensed list of all the things that you want for a fulfilling career. So I'm talking about the achievements that you've had up until now that you want to take forward into your next job, your skills, your strengths. And let me tell you what I mean by strengths, which is what you like and you're good at. That's the sweet spot for me where you often will find career fulfillment if you if you land that one. Uh, your work environment, um, the working conditions that you want, the salary and of course how it fits with the rest of your life in terms of the number of hours you're working. I know this is complicated and you may not have thought about a lot of these things up until now. Um, it is good to and a career consultant can help you through that process along with some resources that you'll find in the description below this YouTube video. But once you've put in that effort, once you've got really clear about what you want, then you'll be able to discern between different options with way more confidence and less anxiety and make that right decision.
Another consideration for your plan A, B and Z is to assess your chosen field or industry right now. Some parts of it may be growing, others retracting, and it's advisable to take the course into those parts of the growing now, all other things being equal. Um, you're more likely to have uh, a greater chance of success and then to be able to grow in that role and take on more opportunities as they come up. An example of this might be financial services right now where audit and restructuring could be these growing areas that you could consider. So what's crucial to understand your industry is to have structured careers information and up-to-date careers information about what's happening. So a great place to start is the QM industry guides. You can find those on our websites. They're full of links that are gonna be useful. Um, one which is always good is to look at the professional associations, the trade bodies, the industries, the industry associations, the institutes, um, that often have structured careers information and up-to-date uh, market information as well. They'll also have people who are really in the know and it might be possible to connect with them and conduct an informational interview. Um, if you're not clear on what that is, book an appointment with us. Next, is it's a good consideration to consider your bridge options. So that's your plan B and your plan Z. And I mentioned that this is often going to be a nearby alternative and that's when the role and the industry has a significant overlap of the knowledge, the skills and the network that is going to be useful for you to thrive in that job. Um, it can be complex to figure that out and certainly you can talk to us about how to do that in an appointment. The most important thing is to be aware of that job market and then make a careful consideration about what that small step, that bridging option between what you want to do in the future that might not be feasible now and what the reality is now and the jobs you can take now so that your next career move after this one is going to move you in the right direction smoothly. And what's key to coming up with this plan is to identify your transferable skills. Time and time again, I meet students who think they have a very narrow skill set, but so often it's way more transferable than you think. It does require some thought to get that right, and we're here to help you on that, of course. Just as an example, if you're thinking of going into digital marketing, it could be really good to emphasize any quantitative metric on your CV that you have today. You may have been part of a society and have led a change that improved all of the members' experience in some way. And that could be a great transferable skill to show that you can help in the customer experience of any, any client or customer of an organization. Remember, no matter what is happening in the economy right now, you can take control of your decision-making process on your career. You can make good career decisions, the best possible ones you can right now. And we're here to help. Do book an appointment with us. And I hope you're inspired by Priscilla's story and um, I hope we can help from here.